A nasty diaphobia. The fear that somewhere there is a duck watching me. Actually it's not a duck, it's some sort of goose, but there you go. It's just one of the yard. And I recognise it as one of my neighbours. But what it's doing over here I've no idea. Never mind. Probably eating things. Morning folks, it's Monday. It's Monday. And it's sunny, and it's dry, and I think I'm going to have a go at cutting that grass today, probably with the strimmer, because it's far too long for the lawnmower. Yeah. Ducky is waddling off again, to who knows where. Right, I'm just having the, uh, the British Standard tidy up, then I'm going to uh, finish that and put the uh, flue back together, put the insulation back on. And uh, then it's time for a test light. I might not get to it today though because I've got lots of other stuff to do. So I'm going to crack on and see how I get on. Right folks, as I always say, it's done. The flue's on. The flue box is back on. The old flue's blocked up very neatly. The air blast is back on. So we're ready for a light just to see if we clear the smoke. So let's do it. Also damp paper. Fire in the hole, or at least a little bit. Well, it appears to be drawing. Oh, that might even that might even be a touch warm. Let's see if we can see anything coming out of the top. I do believe there might be. Yes there is. Yes there is. There you go. It works. Thank God. Right, next thing to do is put some wood in it, isn't it? Oh yes. Doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look nice? Right, I'll chop some wood and we'll light a proper fire and we'll see if we can uh, see if we can get some heating on. In actual fact, I've just had a downpour and it's quite cold. So let's give it a try. I'll bring you back when we're away. Doesn't that look good, eh? It's only been this about five minutes and already there's heat going up to the uh, heat exchanger. There we are, oh, it's starting to rain again. What a surprise. Doesn't that look good? Nice. That uh, stove black was well worth a few quid it cost. Right, it's going to take 10 or 15 minutes to heat up. I'll bring you back when it has done. And there we go, folks. It's gone out. It's heated the water beautifully. The thermostat's cut it off. 
that works beautifully. The only thing it doesn't do is circulate. So either there's something wrong with that pump, which I doubt, or we're airlocked. I can't see where we could be airlocked because as far as I've, I've just had the level out on those pipes up there and they're bang on level. So it should... Weird. I might just take them out with the clips and move them around a bit. But uh, other than that everything's working fine. It puts a lot of heat into the water very quickly. The, uh, the thermostat cuts off beautifully. I've actually turned the thermostat up and it's cut off again. So. Everything's working hunky-dory, except it's not circulating. Which is really weird. Because you can hear... Do you hear the pump over there for a minute? It pumped over there for a minute and it stopped. I think I'll just go, I think I'll just go and have a look up there and see if it's not pumping over all the time. Right, so... We're 90% of the way there. But we still have a bit of a problem. Right folks, I've come to some conclusions I think. When you turn this on, you can hear it over pump just for a second. Right? Which indicates that it's moving water that way, but it won't go that way. Oh, I've got a phone call now. Right folks. I've let it go out, it's still hot, water's still nice and hot, but it isn't circulating. This doesn't make a lot of sense. The pump is on the return, it's pumping downhill. When you turn the pump on, you can hear the water over pump for just a second, and then you get this noise from the pump. That noise from the pump is the pump cavitating. In other words, it's trying to pump the water, but the water won't move. So the only thing, and that airlock's on 22mm, I've checked for airlocks, I've lifted the pipe out and moved it all around, it's made no difference. But that's definitely cavitating. Here, when it, when it starts going thump, 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 thump. That's cavitating. That's the, ro the, the rotor in the pump losing its grip on the water, if you like. Trying to push it against, or trying to suck it through. So it looks like we've got no circulation through the uh, heat exchanger. Now, what has happened? Two possibilities. Firstly, in my enthusiastic stretching on of PTFE tape, I have managed to stretch a piece of PTFE tape across one of the fittings and blocked it. Now, this is possible, but it's not very likely because I always check that I haven't done that before I put the fitting together. The second thing is, did something crawl into the heat exchangers while they were chucked in the corner of the workshop? And is it still in there? So the thing to do is to take those two elbows off and see if I can blow some compressed air through the uh, heat exchanger. And then, I don't know, because I've, I've checked those pipes, there's no, I've had those pipe, that top pipe out, there's no airlock in it. Uh, it gets hot to about that corner and then nothing. And the strange thing is with, with this, when you, when you turn the pump on, it over pumps and then it cavitates and then when you turn the pump off again this piece of pipe where my hand is gets warm and that's because the water is moving so far down that pipe under the pump right and when you switch the pump off it rushes back up again to there, which tells me that one of these two pipes is blocked. Right? So, investigation. It may be tomorrow, it may not. I've got an appointment tomorrow morning, first thing in Hull. So, whether I get back 
in time, and so is Catherine for that matter, whether I get back in time to come to Langdraft or whether I can bring myself to come, I don't know. I'll see you all maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. Bye now. Good morning, folks. Thursday. Yesterday, I did a poo run and put another kennel front on. Well, rebuilt another kennel, another enclosure, if you like. Right, so what's to do with this non-circulating, non-working heating system? Well, I've been thinking about it, as you do. I think the thing to do is to turn off the water supply valve, turn off the tank valve, drain down some of the water, take those two elbows off up there, and blow through the heat exchanger with compressed air. Because I'm almost certain it's going to be the fact that I've stretched some PTFE tape over one of the unions in there and it should just pop and that should cure it. Uh, if it isn't that, I don't know what it is. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be. But that's my first thing. And then what I shall do is I'll drain down into a tub Right, and then I'll put the water back into the tank and turn the valve on again and then turn the mains water on and allow the mains water to top it up if it needs it because that way I keep all the leak sealer and put the leak sealer back into the system because the whole idea of the leak sealer is that it stays in the system. So there we go. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll bring you back when I'm part way through and we'll blow some compressed air through that heat exchanger and just check it's free. No doubt getting a face full of water as we do it. Right, onward. Now, there won't be, I don't think, a video next week because next week coincides with the time that my two daughters leave York for the summer and I have to clear both their flats out and move their... Uh, all their goods and chattels back home uh, and that's happening on two or three separate days so the chances of me getting to the workshop are pretty slim so I might call it a day for next week and come back to you the week after right I'm going to crack on with that and see how I get on and then I fell down a stirrup pump rabbit hole I knew I had one of these somewhere. I knew I had one somewhere. I think it's Andy's. I think Andy brought it actually. Andy the antiques man. So I picked it up and thought, yeah, will it work? Took the bottom valve out. Yes, there's a ball in the bottom valve. That looks okay. And then I caught sight of the little label on it. The label is the uh, George Crest. And it says, March 1942. And then it says E-H-H, and I thought it said E-H-H-L, but it says E-H-H Limited. E-H-H Limited. And of course, one has to go and look it up on the internet, and it turns out to be... <laughs> oh. No, not that. Not that. I have to cut that bit now. It turns out to be Ernest H. Hill Limited, Long Acre Way, Holbrook Industrial Estate, Sheffield, who are still in business and still making fluid equipment. Hillspumps.co.uk. There you are, Ernest H. Hill. They've been going since the 18, 1841. Ernest H. Hill, manufacturers of pumps and lubrication equipment since 1841. Hills Pumps of Sheffield. Right, I shall now stop being dragged down a rabbit hole and get on with it. I, I, once, I only ever once had to write lines at school. Only ever once. And the lines were, I must concentrate on the job in hand. Too easily distracted. Bye now. Right, folks, that's us taken off. And that drained down. So, 
I'm going to go in with the airline and give it a good blast and see if it pops. And there we are folks, all back together. Worked like a charm. Great big pop and a load of muck came out. And if you can hear that now, it's not pulsing anymore. And it sounds incredibly like it's circulating, so the next thing to do is test it. But I may not be doing that today, because I may have another job to do. So I'm going to nip up to Keith and see if he wants to put another kennel front on. OK, bye now. And that's what came out of the heat exchanger. Nothing very convincing. But as I say, pressure built up and then there was a pop and all this came out. Now that looks mainly like, wow, copper, copper or rust. But the heat exchanger is all copper uh, and it's a 22 mil through pipe so it shouldn't have built anything up in there. But I think that's what I'd done. I think I'd just stretched some PTFE and accidentally stretched it across the bloody hole and blocked it. Of course, the piece of pipe I used for a YouTube could have been blocked as well, but anyway, it's certainly not blocked now and it seems to be working better. So, I may try a relight tomorrow. I may try a relight tomorrow, but for the rest of the day, I think we'll leave it. The stirrup pump worked excellently. Took it all straight, in fact, so effectively that I didn't think it was working. Uh, it seemed to be pouring out of the gland at the top and nothing going up the pipe and then I looked in the bucket and realised it was almost empty. So there you go. So, if you ever start dropping incendiary bombs again, get yourself one. Okay, laters. Just a little side job, straightening some fork tines out in the new Super Duper Forge. Right folks, well I've got sidetracked again. This blower on here has got a pyro cable on it and unfortunately I accidentally leaned on it and snapped it. So what I'm going to do is put a piece of py uh, not pyro, a piece of uh, this is immersion heater cable which is very heat resistant. I can't remember what they call it now, but never mind. And I need another gland, and I can't find one. So I started sorting a load of stuff out. And I also got that out, and got my leg vices out, and started looking at the possibility of a leg vice stand. Well, the possibility, the reality, it's going to happen. Then I got sorting out loads of other stuff. Look at all these lovely ammeters. Uh, this is the junk pile from downstairs to get rid of it to see if I could find another uh, stuffing box and I found a 1960s vibrator isn't that nice but I've sorted a load of stuff out trying to find another uh, cable gland to put in the starter but I can't find one so I'm I'm shuttling forward in bits and pieces but I've got to go babysitting with Catherine tonight so that's it for today so Friday tomorrow and I shall continue playing it's going well I'm sorting stuff out stuff's getting chucked away rubbish bag rubbish box there's so much down there that it just wants chucking out. Right, see you tomorrow. Bye now. Morning folks. Friday. I did a bit of gardening yesterday. Dug all the ragwort and the docks out. I left the brambles in because they're all covered in flowers which means they're going to fruit. There you go. We'll see what we're going to do afterwards. I've still got the grass to cut but it's a bit bloody warm today and so because it's so hot I'm going to light the fire and see what happens.
see if we get a circulation this time. It's all prepared. I've chopped kindling and put paper in. So let's go for it and see what happens. Literally five minutes later, folks. And it's working. We have warm air. We have warm air blowing out. And we have warm air going round the system. These pipes, these pipes are still cold actually. But we do have some we do have some heat coming out of there but it's enough. And it's already it's already warming the water. In fact, the flapper valve is beginning to close up already, but that is very set very low indeed. So there you go. She's working. Wonderful. What's that up to? No, that's up to 50, that's up to 60, 60 odd already. That picks up very quickly. Oh, lovely. I'll just let it tick over at that before I stick any more on. Bring you back in a minute. And there she goes, folks. Lovely circulating system. The gauge up there is reading 70, just over 70 degrees and there's warm air flooding out of there. So we've cracked it. In fact I'm going to let it go out now because otherwise it's going to get too hot in here. There you go. Right, onward. Let's find something else to do. Let's get down, let's get down on my knees and get that piece of cable put on there get that working again. Bye now. Well that's it folks. We've got a nice warm flow, a cool return. I can't begin to hazard a guess at the differential between flow and return but it feels good to me. In other words what that means is that the heat exchanger is losing the heat to the system which is exactly what you want. So I'll let that go out now. And there's that just just slipped a shade over 70 degrees there. That's good. That's excellent. Right. I've created another job now. Because I stood on my toolbox to close the flapper over there and broke the pins off, so I've got that to mend now. Never mind. Bye now. Here we are, folks. Let me just direct the headlight in there. That's where it's cracked. There, I just knocked that and the pyro, it's very small pyro and it's cracked. So I'm taking it out. So I'm going to need a nut spinner. Where does that one go? That one goes to there. Right, so that's... So which is live and which is neutral? Is it... Yes, it is marked on the... It's marked on the... Oh, I can see on there anyway. Okay. Right, and there we are inside the starter. There's the disconnected in the starter. So we can now take the old cable off and put the new cable on. Right, I'll bring you back when I've done it. Right, folks. It's all on. One pyro gland converted to a uh, stuffing gland because it was... Uh, this is of course, it's an old motor, it's an old rig and that's a three quarter conduit thread and not a 20 millimeter. So drilled it out, put a couple of o-rings in there, clamped it up, works beautifully. Right, job finished. Bye now. Oh look folks, a very interesting box of junk. Right, I've got the blower going again. 
So that's back to right. I think the pump is going funny. I came back to this and turned it on. Nothing. And it's red hot. The pump's red hot, so I think that's blown up. But never mind, I've got other pumps. Okay, so it's Friday. It's nearly five o'clock and it's not Cracker Jack. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Load of new subscribers this week. Welcome aboard, folks. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'm still getting 70 to 80 percent of the people who are watching and not subscribed. Please subscribe. And I'll see you all, not next week, because next week I'm completely involved in moving girls out of uh, first year accommodation uh, back home and moving girls who have finished university back home, back home. So I've got a lot on. So I'll see you all the week after. Bye now.